I'm here in a northeastern coastal forest kneeling down in this stream where it has cut down into 12,000 year old clay layers and in these clay layers are the remains of clams and snails and so forth from 12,000 years ago back in the last ice age. With this stream's cross-cutting and down-cutting action and over countless seasons of rainfall making this stream swell and therefore increasing that action, it has exposed the clay layers lying underneath the gravel deposits above. Chunks of the bluish colored clay break off from the stream action after a rainstorm and are deposited further down the stream mixed in with the overlying gravel deposits. And here, a 12,000 year old clamshell that has washed out of the clay and sitting in the stream, appearing to be one of the stream's naturally occurring fauna. So to give a clear picture of uh, what's going on here in this spot, what you had was many thousands of years ago, you had the ocean up inland here where we are at. We're probably 20 miles inland anyway at most 15 to 20 miles inland if not more within that area but anyway uh, the sea used to be in this far the sea level was higher and uh, what it did was deposit these shells uh, that I'm finding here at this site in uh, the mud clay layer at the bottom of, a, of the sea and uh, as the seas recessed back to where they are present day now, um, you have gravel deposits that uh, came over them from glaciation, the grinding down of mountains and hills and so forth and depositing the gravel over that and making another layer on top of that. And uh, that was the process and uh, on top of the gravel layer you have your trees and forests and whatever that uh, have grown over the gravel layer and uh, so it's really fascinating being upstream from where the clam shell was washed down and deposited at we find the source of the shells being deposited in no time as seen here where i'm pointing them out embedded in the clay This particular specimen looks like a good candidate to take back with us and remove it from the clay in which it is embedded. Back at my home, in my own personal laboratory, I've placed the specimen in a dissecting tray with the available instruments needed to remove the clam from the matrix of clay in which it's embedded. We'll come back to that process later. To give an even more detailed explanation of the formations of the deposits from where we were at, we've set up this poster board illustration. We have the side profile of the glacier that was formed during the last ice age. And its direction it took as it grew in size from a north to a south direction towards the Atlantic Ocean. Underneath the glacier, where it meets the surface bedrock, a meltwater current is formed between the glacier layer above and the bedrock layer below. Its formation specifically is caused when the glacier starts to melt and retreat back in a northerly direction. This meltwater current brings with it heavier sand and gravel deposits that settle at a lower profile and lighter finer deposits settling and forming a muddy clay above which is at the bottom of the ocean where marine organisms can be found in this mud. And in the clay deposits at the bottom of the ocean at that time, we find clam shells, 12,000 years old. With the continuing retreat of the glacier and the ending of the last ice age, and with that, the back and forth depositing of gravel and clay, the gravel eventually wins out piling many feet above and from there in modern times we extract these gravel deposits for use for everything from our driveways to mixing with cement. Back to our extraction of the clam we brought back to the lab it went well and here it is. For some it's hard to imagine that these two little shells in the palm of my hand are older than when the Vikings discovered America, older than the start of the Roman Empire and even older than the pyramids of Egypt. This is just a few of the many things about examining our Earth's distant past that makes it so exciting.